So I would like to um, see here if I can, if we can talk a little bit about like a, an example system design problem and see how we might go through it. It's not really a full system design in the sense that you get final answers, but it's like normally in interview questions, you get system design questions. And the, the main part I want to focus on here is how to, where do you identify the things that matter in this system, in this design? And how do you steer the question in a direction where you can make progress? Okay. And so the example I would give you is, uh, you know, a question that usually comes up uh, in, in these uh, Facebook-like interviews or something. And they tell you, how do you design AR glasses? Right. Of course, this is, in my opinion, it's like a crazy question because what do you mean? How do you design AR glasses? It's like a, a, hundreds of different components to design. Which one do you want to focus on? But let's focus here on embedded. Right. We're going to assume certain things exist. What is it? What is it? What are AR glasses? Right. They are glasses you wear on your head, just like regular glasses, and they have a LCD display or some kind of display that is transparent to the environment, and they are able to render. Uh, virtual objects uh, you know in tandem with the existing uh, real objects that's why it's called augmented reality so it's a capable of rendering it's capable of identifying features of a real picture let's say a surface on a table and it's capable of putting a virtual object let's say a coffee mug a virtual coffee mug on that table and then as you move it moves the location of that coffee mug in a manner that is seamless to you, the user. So you would think that this is part of the real world, right? So, okay, what do we have? We have the, uh, we have the camera, or, or what I call it, just not necessarily camera, but I mean the input, right? The video input. Video input. Uh, we have the CPU. And in, in a very high, high level, completely high level, right? And we have, uh, uh, let's say, the output, like an LCD screen. Right? These two are, of course, on top of each other. But this is what you have initially. Like, this is how I would think about it. Now, the main thing when it comes to embedded systems, I mean, you might, you might come and give someone an answer like this. Well, I just need a CPU, something that can analyze the video frames that come in and extract features, you know? And then I have descriptions of 3D objects that it can uh, send out to the LCD to know exactly where to put it. So yes, in principle, this is all you need. But then the questions come, well, what are the critical paths, right? So one critical path that I can think of, and we talked about right now on real-time operating systems uh, or real-time embedded systems is what kind of responsivity I want from this system. And so this is the first thing you'd need to think about as somebody answering this question. What is the metric? Can anyone tell me what, what, is, your, uh, what is your guess of what kind of metric? What is that time budget, right? So right now, what I need to do is I need to analyze an input. Let's say we're doing this in frames. I get one frame of the video. I analyze and I detect the objects, let's say the surface, and I render out uh, the coffee mug to put it in that particular location. This loop time, how fast should it be? How fast? I mean, that's, that's one way of looking at this. Like we are trying to make sure that I can analyze the content and provide the output fast enough. Well, what's fast enough? Any thoughts, at least? And these are the kind of questions they ask you. Again, when they ask you, design AR glasses, it's so general that they want you to narrow the problem into something relevant to the role you're applying for, right? That's your job. They don't actually mean go design the whole AR glasses. So I, as an embedded developer, I'm going to narrow it down to, as I said, 
finding some bottleneck of design, especially as it relates to the choice of hardware uh, and what is needed. And then I'm going to, um, uh, you know, make recommendations there. So what would you think is, what, what is the main metric? The main metric to me is that when I move, for this to be a proper augmented reality experience, it needs to be responsive enough when I move my head, right? I don't want to see the coffee mug lagging as I move and the perspective of the table changes, right? And so, does that give you a hint? How fast can the human eye dis d discern changes in frames? You will see most TVs and stuff are at 60 hertz. They're running at 60 hertz, right? Or maybe 120, let's say, just in case, you know. But 60 hertz is good enough for the human eye. But let's go to 120 just to be conservative. So one over 120 seconds. That's a little shorter than one millisecond. Uh, no, uh, it's a little larger than, a little shorter than 10 milliseconds. So let's say maybe, maybe it's eight milliseconds. I don't know, right? So I have eight milliseconds to read the sample from the camera, right? Well, the camera is going to read the sample in parallel with my CPU running. So maybe I won't even calculate that time that it's integrating the image to give me an image because uh, are integrating the, the signals from the, you know, from the photons to give me the image. Uh, I need to make sure that the camera gives me data every eight milliseconds. Okay. And then I need to have my algorithm of detection. That's the part that, for example, I don't know much about, right? It's a lot of computer vision. So, I'm like, okay, that is a parameter that's going to be outside of my design scope, but I need to make sure that the computer vision algorithm doesn't take a lot of time, takes a very short time. But then there is a uh, virtual object that I need to render out on the LCD really fast. So what do you need there? If you do, again, if you understand anything about 3D design, you're going to realize that rendering a 3D object in screen actually takes a lot of steps. So it actually probably makes sense that you might need a GPU, right? You need a graphic processing unit that can render these images. So there, again, as part of your embedded design, you recognize that it's going to take a while to software render stuff onto the LCD directly. So I'm not going to handle that. I'm going to give that to the GPU. So I need a GPU. OK, is that enough? Let's say the GPU. Let's say we calculated that the GPU output time plus the uh, computer vision part is going to be less than eight milliseconds. Well, what else does this device need to do? It needs to detect motion, right? When I move my head up and down, I might need to. Uh, it needs to figure out how I've moved. Now it can do that using camera data. Yes. It can look at one frame of camera, compare it to another frame of camera. And there are a lot of you know, uh, computer vision techniques like something called optical flow that will estimate in which direction did I move. And that will allow it to calculate in which direction uh, the 3D object needs to be placed so that it can remain on top of that table. But uh, this calculation can be pretty intensive, pretty time intensive. So what do you do? Any, any thoughts on what you can do? And again, this is, this is not generic embedded, you see, but if you're applying for like an AR role with Facebook, these are the part of, this is the part of what you need to know, at least you need to be familiar with, to understand uh, you know, how to get a role in, in this kind of space because you're going to be designing the embedded system for the AR glasses. You need to be familiar with, uh, with, with some of these uh, topics. If this is taking a long time to analyze motion from the camera, then another method is using motion sensors. Right? They're pretty fast. A gyroscope 
in an accelerometer can give you information about which direction you're looking or which direction you're moving much faster than analyzing a camera could. But you know what it cannot tell you? The motion sensor cannot tell you it's your position relative to the space you're in. So if you were to move sideways, right, and stop somewhere, your perspective has changed. The gyro will catch your motion as you are moving, but once you've stopped, it's gonna read zeros. So how do you trace your location? For that, you're gonna need the camera again, right? You have a certain reference point, the first image the camera took maybe, and everything you're doing is with relation to that, um, to that camera. So, so now you get into areas where, uh, you know, we're talking about something called visual odometry, right? Or visual inertial odometry. Uh, things called SLAM, if you've heard about that, like simultaneous localization and mapping. These are concepts that show up a lot in augmented reality, and they relate a lot to your choice of hardware as an embedded developer. And when you understand some of these, you will see that, and again, each one of these is like a course on its own, but when you understand these, you'll find that the, 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 the big common factor between all these algorithms is that it requires a lot of linear algebra, right? A lot of, um, yeah, matrix multiplications and things like that. So chances are good that you might need some kind of a digital signal processing. Now, it's funny because the GPU does that. But the GPU is taken up probably for your rendering, for giving data fast enough to the LCD. And so you might not have that bandwidth for your calculations. So you might need a separate DSP or maybe an FPGA uh, or some kind of hardware that can do in parallel all this massively parallel uh, linear algebra calculations. And so that is how, and this, this would be sufficient for somebody who's interviewing in an embedded system. You see, we didn't really answer. We didn't really give numbers. I didn't tell you what algorithm to use, but your understanding of what impacts what decision, your understanding of, well, it's because I need things in eight milliseconds that chances are I might not be able to do an optical flow and I might need to rely, rely, rely on motion sensors, right? Chances are that my software rendering is going to be very slow. And so there is something like a hardware, like a GPU that I could use to project this image. These are the kind of things that an interviewer wants to hear from you in a system design uh, uh, question. So keep that in mind, because usually what I've seen is that um, people who complain from you know, um, bad interview experiences, they always bring up system design as something that gets them stuck. And I think the reason is that you always look at a system design as if you, a system design question, it, it hits you like a storm. It's like you, you, you draw a blank. You feel like, where do I start, right? Always try to guide these system design questions to an area of comfort for you that you can talk to. All the interviewer is looking for is when you identify a certain small part of this design, can you design actually? Can you navigate? Can you budget? Can you find what is the critical path in time and power and whatever you're comfortable with? And tell them what are the list of tools you have to play around with to make, to meet the timing constraints, to meet the power constraints. And whether you have enough intuition, for example, to know that, yeah, reading data from a sensor is probably shorter time and much more efficient than reading, analyzing data from a camera. But reading data from a sensor, for example, is um, very noisy. I guess noisier than the kind of data you would get from an optical flow algorithm with a camera. So maybe you need to combine the two. And there are combination techniques known, right? Look up sensor fusion. So. Sensor fusion are a lot of algorithms that can allow you to combine two different sensors to estimate, to better estimate what the state of the system is going to be like. And so these are all in the heart of embedded development for AR. 